Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be looking at some folk art images and I'm just going to show you an old book um, that I had some work in many years ago. You might remember um, that I made a grandmother clock with some year fives quite a long time ago and you've seen it in the school office. And here's an example of one. And I'm very inspired or used to be very inspired with my paper mache in the use of folk art. I'm just going to show you some examples of where that might come from. So folk art is a kind of decorative art and it comes from all different cultures um, and countries. This one here is folk art from India and it's often used to decorate um, wall hangings or furniture, textiles, fabrics and quite often you can see that the style is very stylistic but it's also quite simple and not traditional so a lot of the time birds are used in all different types of folk art and if you can see here what I like about it is that whatever happens on this side happens on this side so there's a symmetry can you see this bird and this bird they might be coloured in differently but they kind of work together don't they and that's what I like and that's why I use them a lot in my clocks and my mirrors you see the same here. So it's quite simple. You can draw a very simplistic design and then just reproduce it on the other side. I'm going to show you this one. This one is from Hungary. This is Hungarian folk art. And these are often painted by Hungarian peasant workers. And can you see they've painted these designs onto old wooden chests. And again, can you see the symmetry? Here. So whatever they've painted here, they do the same on the other side. Our flowers play a big part. Birds again, look, can you see? So I thought we could have a go, first of all, at doodling some designs and take it from there. Right, so I've got a sheet here of watercolour paper, but you can use any um, paper you like. I think something like sketch pad paper or cartridge paper would be better than a thin paper because we might add watercolour to it at the end. Okay, now I'm using <clears throat> water permanent markers that are waterproof. I've got these two, water and fade proof and this permanent marker here. Sharpies are good. Anything that when you add water to it, it's not going to run is good. And then I'm going to kind of use this as a, a bit of inspiration. Can you see that? Can you see how we've got this central line here and then we've got branches going off it with birds and all sorts of things going on. So I'm going to start like that and then we're going to work on one side and then replicate it on the other. I'll show you what, how that works. I'm going to draw a line. I'm not going to do it too straight, roughly in the middle. This is not an exact science. It doesn't have to be exact. So I'm keeping that quite simple. And then at the top, I'm going to draw a flower. you see that I've not made it exactly the same on the other side and I think that's a, a key thing with folk art even though it's symmetrical it's not a total mirror image otherwise it would just look too perfect and we don't want that okay and then I'm going to start by branching off literally with some branches so I'm going to do that I'm going to try and make the line a bit thinner and I'm going to do two up here like that and then I'm going to do one, let's do it over here, and then copy it over here. And then one about here. And then one like that. And then I'm going to do some leaves at the bottom. Can you see that? fitting onto my camera so I'll move it down a bit like that 
Okay, so then I'm going to get my thinner pen out because I want some more detailed work now going on. So I'm going to start by just doing this. Just the simple, start off simply, that's the thing. move this about so you can see it on the camera but can you see how if I just keep adding detail as I go along make sure you do the same kind of thing to the other side so there's a bit of symmetry there and you can just keep going until you fill up the space and you're happy with what you've got now I've used heart motifs I've used flowers leaves a lot of folk art comes from nature but you could use anything you like because there are no rules with folk art basically apart from the guidelines which are to try and keep this symmetry going if you can. It doesn't matter if you don't. And then I've decided, now I've done this in black and white, that I like it in black and white. I don't actually want to paint over it but if you wanted to you could because you've used waterproof um, pens. And basically, when you've got a design like that, then um, artists, folk artists, would use that design on furniture, on plaques, on wood, to hang up as a decorative item. So think about what you could do. And maybe I'll have a think as well and see what I can come up with. Enjoy. So I actually drawn I don't know if you could see this it's quite faint in pencil and I've drawn on the on the surface I've drawn with a pencil keep it quite light the good thing is if you use a tester pot of emulsion you can use a wet cloth a damp cloth to rub out anything you don't like so if you've made any mistakes you can simply just wipe that away look okay but I suggest that you do that first. You don't want to go straight in there. And what I might do now is just use a couple of very simple colours. So these colours here to paint the design instead of drawing it to paint it. And the thing about emulsion is it's decorative. It's what we use on walls and we might use it on furniture. So that's a good one to use. But don't forget you can use poster paints as well. So don't worry about that. Okay.
So here it is as it's finished. Now I've painted it with some uh, emulsion. I've gone over with a waterproof pen and I've just done the sides here too. Now it's all quite roughly done because I wanted to give it that kind of authentic feel. And what I thought I'd do is get some sandpaper and very lightly sand over the top. And what this will do is give it a more weathered antique look. Just do it very lightly with, with some fine sandpaper, not too rough. And then a very, very slightly damp cloth. I mean, it's, it's hardly wet at all. I'm going to just wipe over it, get rid of that dust. But also that will take off. I'm going to rub it into the paint and that will take away some of the paint as well. Give it a more faded look. So it doesn't look quite so modern. It have been painted a while ago. Oh, I've got some of that rough, that sanded away paint there, I quite like that. Gives a bit more texture and just gives it a bit more of a faded look. There. You could have a go, keep it as simple as you like. You can uh, varnish it with satin varnish, um, or acrylic varnish rather. Um, which will protect it once you've done all this.